Ms. Smith, you are here in court today because you claim a miscalculation during your pregnancy has left you unsure about the paternity of your four-month-old son, Lamandre. Now, today you hope to determine whether your ex-boyfriend or the defendant, Mr. Brooker, fathered your child. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brooker, you're Ms. Smith's fiance. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and you're one of her son's possible fathers. Yes. Your now, Honor. you admit you've had doubts all along. Yes, Your Honor. And your detective work has left you with questionable evidence. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Ms. Smith, explain to the court why your fiance may not be your child's biological father. Well, Your Honor, me and Lamontre met back in college uh, last year, but at that time I was with my ex-boyfriend, so I knew I couldn't talk to Mr. Brooker. So when me and my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend ended up breaking up, I talked to Lamontre and I invited him to my birthday party. And then after that, a few days after we had sex, so, and then once that happened, I was like really starting to like him and be interested. And a couple of weeks later, or that, well, next month in September, I felt like sick. So I decided to take a pregnancy test. Okay. And so it came back positive. So the next day, I actually uh, went to the doctor and I confirmed it. And that's when they gave me the, my due date of April 9th. Okay. So now, Mr. Brooker, is that an accurate account? Well, yes, ma'am. Basically, everything she said is accurate. We met through school. She invited me to a birthday party. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I kind of I was really digging her or whatnot. <laughs> everything else, it, it flowed through time. We got together, we did our thing. Blase squase. Um, Blase squase. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That means everything was rolling. Everything it was, was flow. Yes, the relationship was going well. Yes, ma'am. Nothing eventful. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Through time, she came up. Well, she, we was in the. Uh, she was in her car at that time, and I was home. And she sent me a text saying it was important and she needed to talk to me. And I was like, okay. And I'm laying down, and she said, uh, I just went to the doctor and I found that I was uh, six weeks instead of eight. And I'm like. Uh, my heart dropped. I was like, oh, my God. So I was like, okay, cool. All right. So we got him in person. We talked about it. She said it may be a possibility. Uh, she was sure of who it was. And she, we were the only... T uh, me and her ex were the only two dudes that she was with during the time. Okay. Um, so she was open with you about that? Basically, she was open and she was honest and straightforward. And I was cool about it. And it was understandable. So now, you and Lamontre Jr., you know, this is... Your son, you have a bond now, right? Yes, Your Honor. And how are you feeling in terms of, oh, what a beautiful picture? Have you all started doing father and son things and, oh, yeah. look. <laughs> yeah, oh, now that is such a cute picture. We like, we like to talk in the morning. He, you like to talk? <laughs> talk uh-huh. What do you all talk about? I, I, I have no clue. Whatever's on. You don't know what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's so good, though. I love it when they start rambling. You don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. But that's beautiful. So you have a bond with this little boy. Yes, he has your name. You all are engaged. Yes, ma'am. We, um, we plan on getting married in September. September. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. So now, Ms. Smith, talk to me about this miscalculation. What happened? Well, the thing is, I went to three different doctors. The first one I went to, and they told me, well, yeah, you're about nine, eight or nine weeks pregnant, and they did it by the chart. So that led back to my ex. And then that next week, I, I went and I got a blood test done, and they said that just about the same thing, eight or nine weeks, and my due date was April 9th. And that's the reason we're here. So, when you went to the doctor, you have evidence I have here? Evidence. Jerome, please, pass me that evidence. I want to understand this. Right. And you brought a calendar I, to explain yes. this. Yes. Please step up to your evidence. And let's see. Okay. This first one basically shows... Oh, boy. Um, ...the time I stopped having intercourse with my ex, which was July 17th. All right. Okay, in September, these are the dates I actually went to the doctor, and they gave me a due date of April 9th. And they said I was eight or nine weeks pregnant. Right, which lines up with the first two pieces of evidence you submitted here. Correct. So, first two appointments, you're 
feeling like it's likely it could be the exes, and you're telling Mr. Brooker that too. Right. Yes. All right, you, okay. okay. Now right. what happens? <clears throat> so this is where it gets confusing. <laughs> I was stating that me and Mr. Brooker had sex August on the 14th, and then that's when I, I went to the doctor again on the, the 24th, and they gave me a date of May 13th. And at that time, I'm like, that corresponds with the time me and him started having sex. Oh, so now at your third doctor's appointment, which this piece of evidence, this is a picture from your ultrasound, after they actually do the ultrasound, they give you the due date of seven weeks seven. later, May 13th, mm -hmm. and then when you count back, that date of conception is in line with the time you were with Mr. Brooker. Yes. Wow. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. You have two due dates that far apart. Right. One April 9th and the other one May 13th. That's a pretty big discrepancy. It'd yes. be questionable too, Yon. So, all right. First two appointments, April 9th. Third appointment, May 13th. When was Lamontre born? Lamontre was actually born March... 12. Oh, my goodness. He was born premature. He, um, he was born two months early because I have an incompetent cervix, so that kind of permits me from holding the, the child inside, so they had to do a surgery. And... Well, the question is, really, though, you said, well, two months early based on the third <laughs> due date, oh, but yeah. only a month early based upon the first two appointments. Exactly. And the doctors, they weren't certain whether... He was one or two months exactly. premature. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Thank you for that. That exhibit really helped. The court wanted to understand how uh, this type of discrepancy can happen, so the court is calling upon an expert witness. And, Jerome, if you would please escort Dr. Jamila Gator. She's an MD and board certified in family medicine. I'd like to call upon her and ask her a couple of questions. Watch your step going up. Okay. Hello, Dr. Gator. Thank you so much for joining us Hello. today. We have a situation here, and we needed expert testimony. So, have you reviewed the paperwork we submitted to you and her evidence? Yes, I've reviewed the medical records. Can you hold up the calendar so we can understand this? Thank you. All right. So, Dr. Gator, as you can see, on July 17th is the last time Ms. Smith was intimate with her ex. Yes. Now, on August 14th was when she was intimate with Mr. Brooker. Correct. First due date she got was April 9th. Yes, correct. The second one, seven weeks later, was the date. How can that happen, and why does that happen? It actually happens more often than you would think. At Miss Smith's first visit, she basically was given a potential due date of April the 9th, and that was based off of her last menstrual period of July the 3rd. However, as she testified, her periods are irregular. So when you're basing it off that information, it can be very inaccurate. At the third visit, she has an ultrasound, which clearly dates her at seven weeks pregnant. So the doctor revises the due date to the date in May, the 13th. And that's because a first trimester ultrasound is gonna be the most accurate way that you can date a pregnancy. And so that would make the date of conception in mid to late August. Which then points towards Mr. Brooker being the father. Yes. Wow. Unless, and so at the point- Unless she was intimate with someone else during that time period. No. Ms. Smith, tell us now, because we no. got all these calendars going. If we got to <laughs> add something else on here, tell us now. There is no adding. That's it. Okay. So, now when the baby's premature... Yes. It further confuses things. So, I can understand why everyone's confused in this situation. But the ultrasound is very clear. She was seven weeks pregnant at the end of September, which puts the date of conception in mid to late August. All right. Well, thank you so much, doctor. We you. appreciate your testimony. <laughs> Jerome, will you please escort Dr. Gator? 
So that was a lot. And so because of this, Mr. Brooker, you had doubts. I had doubts, I did. But at the same time, um, like I told her, uh, through the time we were together, I actually ended up falling in love with her. So oh, regardless, you did. yes, ma'am. Regardless whether uh, the result came out of the baby was to be mine or not, I was going to be there. I even gave him my name. Oh, that's wonderful. So throughout the pregnancy, you were there. Yes, ma'am. Did uh, you go to doctor's appointments? Yes, ma'am. Some it, of them. It, it was it, some of them because, like the first, the beginning of them, I didn't go to because I didn't know um, until she called me uh, after the third appointment, and. I gave him my name, but I didn't sign a birth certificate because of the, the DNA test. So, Ms. Smith, throughout your pregnancy, with these due dates shifting and everything going on, what were you telling your ex? Because he thought he was the father, at least a strong potential, right? Right. So what were you telling him? Well, I, I'll let him know up front that, you know, Trey could possibly be the father, but he was really upset because it would have been his first child, and that would have just made him happy. But he said that if I, you know, whatever happens, he want to be there and he want to be supportive. So I was like, okay. But at the same time, he was sad. But at that did time... Did he go to doctor's appointments? Yes. Oh, did he... you all go to the same one? Oh, no. Nah. No, well, and he, just, he went to the first three. I was about to say, now, <laughs> nah. this is very big of everybody. He was just... He went to the first three. I don't get the The first like couple that. one, yeah. Okay, so when it was pointing towards him, he went to the doctor. Yes. And then when the arrows start pointing towards you, you started going. Correct. Who was at the hospital when the baby was born? I was, was there. You were there. Yeah, birthing ain't, ain't what women say it is, but I was there. Birthing what? It's, it's not what women say it is, but I was there. So when the baby was born, I know you're happy that the baby's here, but I can imagine you were thinking in your mind, now what date does this go with? That, and is he okay? And it was a lot going through my mind. I could imagine. So now you really are like, I gotta have a DNA test. Correct. And so what do you do? Well, uh, my cousin bought a test for me. I took it there to the hospital. So your cousin brought an at-home DNA test. Yes, ma'am. Right. And... Okay, and... The, but the baby wasn't at home yet, right? No, he was still in the hospital. He was still in the hospital. He was in the, 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 the NIC. For a whole month. And I swabbed him, like, the first... In the NIC unit? Y yes, yes. ma'am. They, they let you do that? Yes, yes ma'am. He was only two days born. So two days the baby was two days old and you bought a home DNA test <laughs> and went into the intensive care unit. Yes, ma'am. And, and what did the nurses and the doctor say? Well, she said that it wouldn't be all is that accurate and whatnot, but she said some of the tests work, some of the tests don't. And she advised us not to do it. I did it anyway. And you knew he was going to do it? Yes, I was there when he did it. He oh. wanted to do it, so I'm like, okay, because I was sure. I'm like, okay, he's the father. I want to let him do it. Um, but the nurses was like, oh, well, we wouldn't advise you to do that. Wait till he's a little bit older. I so the nurses told... The, the let me see also. that evidence, Jerome. <laughs> so these are the results of your at-home test. Yes, ma'am. It says probability of paternity 0%. What did you think then? I still my baby. We're you did? Dogs. Yes, ma'am. So, Miss Smith, you say you don't believe this test was accurate? I don't... No, I don't believe that. Because I feel like he was born early, um, and the nurse advised us not to do it. So, that's why I don't believe that it's, it's accurate. And I want to get another one done. But you just wanted to know uh, right I want away. to know, and I want to know also for the, the baby. I, I feel like he deserves the truth, regardless. Of yes, he does. does. <laughs> You're right. You still believe he's your biological son in your heart? Yes, ma'am. Even though the probability of paternity on this test was zero Correct. percent? Correct. And that's why you're here? Yes, yes ma'am. And, Miss Smith, you're convinced as well you truly believe this is Mr. Brooker's child? Yes. All right. I think it's time for the results. Jerome, the envelope. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Smith, 
v. Brooker, as it pertains to four-month-old Lamontre Brooker. Mr. Brooker. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Smith v. Brooker, as it pertains to four-month-old Lamontre Brooker. Mr. Brooker, you are not his father. I'm sorry to have to deliver that news. It's okay. I'm still gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Smith, what are you feeling right now? That was not what I was hoping. It's all right, babe. I am really, really proud of how mature you all have been through this situation. It has been confusing. And Mr. Brooker, I cannot say enough how much I commend you for being a stand-up guy and just stepping up to the plate despite the confusion. All right, I wish you the best of luck. Take care of that beautiful baby boy. Mr. Milner, you claim the defendant, Ms. Heath, deceived you into believing that you fathered her three-month-old son, Zakaria Milner Jr. Yes, You say you love her son and would be devastated to find out that you've been loving another man's child, which is why you have petitioned the court to order a paternity test. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Heath, you admit... There was another man, but claim Mr. Milner signed the birth certificate acknowledging paternity, and therefore there is no reason for a test to be ordered. The court must determine if there is enough evidence to warrant ordering a paternity test. So, Mr. Milner, why do you believe Ms. Heath has been deceiving you this entire time? I feel like she's been deceiving me because when I first met her, I told her straight up what I want. And that is, I want a family. I want to be a family man. I'm done red in the streets. I'm really tired of that. And I feel like at the time, as soon as I said that, the light came up above her head like, bing, I got me a duck. You heard me? I'm finna go ahead and pluck this man for whatever I can. And that's why I'm here. I really need this test. Oh, you thought, like, a, a, a light came on, like, I can use him up. I got, I got one that's just, I can tell anything to? Man, get away with it, yeah. Your Honor, that wasn't the case. Um, when I met Mr. Milner, yes, he did say he wanted the family. Of course, I wanted the same thing. I have other children, you know? This was not a part of the plan, you know? I didn't, I didn't just see Man. him and was like, oh, I got somebody that's well, gonna sit here and, yeah. you know, do, do the family things and take care of my Whatever. kids. And so, how did you meet? Tell me that. I can tell you straight up. We was over the hour ride with a friend. She was with a family member. Her little family member done stopped up my homeboy. And that's when I seen her. I seen her. Ooh, wait, let me get this little thing. I just moved to Texas, you hear me? I'm from Louisiana. And then when I seen her, and I, I needed something, I needed something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need to be a female to talk to and get the note. Well, okay. and, it wasn't just that easy, though. Go ahead. Go stop and it. so I, I think said, I understood, I understood that testimony. That's just true. So, you met, yeah. you exchanged numbers. Yes, ma'am. And, um, you know, I get to talking to him, I get to filling him out a little more. Um, and I felt like he was intelligent, like he wanted something out of life. You know, it's, it's, I had seen something in him that I thought, you know, that we could make something out of this. Okay. Were you in a committed relationship or were you just seeing other people too? No committed. No, we were... As far as I was concerned, Your Honor, within a couple of days, we were in a relationship, literally. So you all decided, you know, it's just gonna be me and you, let's do this. Right. So now you're going well, everything's going great. What happens? You find out you're pregnant. Okay, well, like, I was, in a, I was intimate with Mr. Milner. Um, I felt, you know, I, normally with all my kids, I felt it almost immediately when I was pregnant, you know? And I, I, I kind of had these bodily feelings. Me and Mr. Milner were joking um, about, you know, what if you, you know, what if you are, what if you're not? And I'm just like, I don't want to be, you know? I got three kids, I don't need another one. You know, this was not a part of the plan. Mr. Milner, I want to hear from you. When you found out she was pregnant, what was your response? I mean, I was happy. I was excited. He didn't and then, have a and then, and then I started having that. I'm like, dang, hold up, hold up, hold up. He didn't have a response, Your Honor. And what I was made excited. you say, hold up, hold up, hold up? 
Shoot, we just met. And you pregnant two, three weeks later? His family members is the reason why. No. Yeah. Oh, That's so people. this happened quickly after you met. Yeah, quickly. It was very quickly. Quickly. We the met. Quickly. The relationship we met was quick. Oh, you pregnant by that. August the 14th. Oh, yes, well, sir. I mean, it could happen like that. First oh. of all, it was the first time. The condom broke the first time. It did. That the it first did. time that and the did. second time. That it did. So, okay. So, yeah. listen. So, listen. So, listen. You're proud of that, huh? <laughs> no, ma'am. I'm sorry about that. So, Mr. Milner, I want to understand this. I'm going to tell Why you do you have right doubt? After everything that happened, we got us an apartment. She's sitting there. We watching TV. Her head is in my lap. Me and her is talking real well. Next thing I know, she just bust out the tears. I mean, she go straight to crying. I don't know if the baby yours or not. Ooh, ooh. That is not true. So I'm like... That's not true, Your Honor. He doesn't have it correct. I'm sorry. Okay, how, how do you see it? How I don't have it correct? Um, I kept trying to make sure with my doctor that I have the conception dates right. Um, when, they, when the date got moved back, I was like, well, maybe, it, you know, maybe the other... In my head, I was like, maybe it could be another... Uh, uh, the other gentleman. Ooh. I thought you all were in a committed relationship. It happened prior to Mr. Milner. That's why I don't understand it. I understand his doubt, but I don't understand the fuel to his fire is like I cheated on him. I did not. Oh, okay. so you're saying it could be to another know. guy before him. A bit, but prior to I him. Believe. So I went ahead and told him because I don't want... I, I've never lied to Mr. Milner. I, I was honest with him from day one about any and everything. What am I lying the about? Woman, the woman... The, I mean, the, I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. The gentleman that he always even claims has nothing to do with the matter. Like, it's always something about me, but I'm always catching stuff on him. All right, so, Mr. Milner, yes, after you heard this, this really substantiated your doubt. It kept working. It kept messing with me, especially when I'm at work. I'm over here adding up August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Dang, that's only eight months. It, it's just not... The, the time wasn't adding up, and it, and it, it, it be... You know, it, 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 it vexes me. It's really getting on my nerves. I just need to know. I got to have this test. I need to know. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Zuccario has your name. Yes, ma'am. So why did you sign the birth certificate? <laughs> I mean... Because I want... Like I, like I said, that when I first met, I want a family. And I know when we was doing the giggity giggity, you know, the, the condo kind of broke. So it could be mine. I don't know. Well, I'm just... At the time, I, I love her. And I, and, I, and I want that family. And I, when I see him, I just... I want, I want a son. I already got two daughters. I want a son. I want that more than anything else. But you have this doubt that just won't go away. It won't. I'm hoping he mind, but like I say, at the end of the day, I don't know. If the mother got that, what am I supposed to do? If the time ain't that, no, what am I supposed to do? Ms. Heath, you submitted a calendar to the court yes, that I would like to review. Zuccario Jr. was born April 18th. Yes, ma'am. 7, 18, 9 and 9. You had sex with Mr. Milner on August the 2nd. Yes, ma'am. You had sex with the other man that week of July 23rd through 26th. Well, no, ma'am. I had sex with the gentleman on the 23rd. I ended it with him on the 26th. But you know you were intimate with him on the 23rd. Yes, ma'am. So let me quickly pull up my conception calculator. If you put in Zacario's birthday of April 18th, the window of conception would calculate to be... 25th to the 30th? July 20th through July 30th. Oh, I did the thing. I Googled it too. Yes, if we, hold on. If we go back to the calendar yes, you submitted... Right, yes, ma'am. That is during the window of time when you were intimate with the other man. Yes, ma'am. It points directly to that time. My conception date was July the 31st that my doctor gave me. Um, but she said the, it, w- it would have been the gentleman closer to that time, which would have been the second with Mr. Milner. So you telling me that July the 30th is when the baby was supposed to, the conception time or whatever, and the closest man to it is me? No, the closest man to it okay, is Okay, but I used, I used condoms. That mean he, I used, he did his thing I used, for me? I used condoms prior to mis- Mr. Milner. I even contacted that gentleman. You even told me that condom broke. Sure, you, you told me that condom broke. And made sure. Did you, did you not tell me that y'all, the condom broke on your I never said the condom broke. So when you did I say that? that? No, I did no, not. Stop. You said so let's I never, I never told him the condom broke. I told him... So, Ms. Heath, 
did you ever not use condoms with that other man? No, ma'am. And I and I made when I contacted him, that's a, that was my question to him. While we were intimate, did the condom break at all? There was there any mishaps or anything? This gentleman told me no, so I told him I don't have anything else to say. What? Like what what are we talking about? All right, I'm you asking you that question because I have broke, I'm I, asking I you that question broke. because I have I a note here broke. in the record that one of my court employees, when she was taking notes on your statement... Yes, ma'am. She heard something different. What's that? Jerome, Hi. can you please escort Lamont's me-bame into the court? Yes. Hold on. Let me stand right here. Hello. For the court record, Lamont's me-bame works for this court... And Ms. Meebain, in the process of taking the statement from Ms. Heath, it's in the record that you heard her say testimony that differs than what she is presenting in court today. Yes, Your Honor. What did she tell you about her relationship with the other man? She told me that sometimes they used condoms and sometimes they did not. Your Honor, I have a situation to where I cannot just not use condoms. So I had condoms on the whole time. Ms. Meebane, when you took that statement, you asked her simply, did she use condoms the entire time? Correct. She said sometimes and sometimes not. Correct. She said sometimes we did and sometimes we did not. Exactly. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, Ms. Heath... Did you ever tell the other man that he could be the biological father? No, ma'am. When I called him, I strictly asked him about the condom, period, point blank. He was like, no, you made sure that I used condoms. He was like, so I should... He was like, you, we stopped messing around before this, you know, all of this transpired. And he said that we... That, that the, nothing happened with the condom. So I was like, I won't contact you. I won't say anything to you. The other gentleman is married, ma'am. Yes. He's married, and I didn't know... Married. Yeah, he's married. Your Honor, while I was messing with this gentleman, I was not aware that he was married until my relative came to me after I had already started a relationship. Relationship, because we never treated it as such. She said, well, you know he's still, me- he's still messing with his wife. I was like, well, why you didn't tell me this prior? Because I don't mess with married men. That is not my cup of tea. Is it that you don't believe this... Married man could have been Zacario's biological father. Is it that you didn't want him to be? Both. Because he was married. It was both, Your Honor, because that man, he he had too much going on. So can you tell me with 100% certainty, 100% that you know Mr. Milner is your child's biological father? With time, Your Honor, I can't. I, I cannot be for sure on anything, and I have to be honest with myself. And I've been honest with Mr. Milner. I don't know for sure. I can't be for sure. That's why I need this test today because, you know, even though he said he'll be there for him, every time we get into an argument, it's like, well, I don't... He's not mine. That's, it's an ex. It's this, it's that. And I'm, t- I'm tired of hearing it. I am. All right. So you both have testified today... You have doubts surrounding the paternity of beautiful Zakari Milner Jr. It is for this reason that this court is going to order that you submit to DNA testing as it relates to the paternity of Zakario Milner and you report back to this courtroom for the results. Bet that up. Is that clear? Yes, Yes, Your Honor. I will see you back here. Court is adjourned. We've reconvened in the case of Milner Sr. versus Heath. In our previous hearing, testimony was submitted to the court involving the paternity of Zacario Milner Jr. And this court determined there was sufficient evidence to warrant DNA testing. And we are back here for the results. Before I go to the results, is there anything either of you would like to say? I can't wait. That's all I know. I can't wait to get my results and go on by my business. Have you prepared yourself either way, Mr. Milner? Because I think the love you have for this young boy who is your junior, you've expressed that so beautifully in the last hearing. If it's determined you are not 
Zakario's biological father. Do you intend on trying to make the relationship work? Nope. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I mean... Call me what you want to call me. Just don't call me late for dinner. I'm be out of there quicker than the Jerry Curl when it get wet. You know what I'm saying? I just... I can't do it. Okay. Well, that page turned, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> so, truly, there's a lot at stake here. Of course, we have been on rocks for a while. So, you know, I can understand him saying that he's not gonna stay because I have to live this every day. So, you've been warned. Pretty he's much. told you. Well, there is a lot at stake. And I think it's time we get the results. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Milner Sr. versus Heath, when it comes to three-month-old Zacario Milner Jr., it has been determined by this court. Mr. Milner, you are the father. Hey! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't seen you smile like this, Mr. Milner. It feel good. It feel great. <laughs> How does it feel to finally get the truth, Miss Heath? It feels good. It's closure. I can live my life peacefully and we can be happy how we were. <laughs> but you know, you all, you got to get it together. For sure. Yes, right. And you got to keep it together. Sure. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's not going to be easy. We strong, we going to make it. Good. You know, ain't that's, nobody love hump in the road. That's great to hear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Listen, listen, listen. It was a huge hump. <laughs> yeah. But at least we're over it. We're over right? it. Now we and go that's what matters. You know, you have so many different textures in the fabric of life. Yeah. And it's what you said. It's just trying to hold it together and remain strong.